All right. Well, apologies uh, this morning. Uh, I had some some computer issues. Uh, camera wouldn't work, so I had to MacGyver it real quick and uh, uh, figure out how that's done. And now Facebook is acting a little weird. So we're trying our best here. Sorry, I know we're a little late, uh, but I probably missed some of you who have probably already uh, checked out knowing that I might not be here. But I'm here. I am here. Cheers. Uh, well, welcome today, everyone. Here, uh, let me see something real quick. Let's see if it's working. But uh, welcome everyone here on this, uh, what is it? It is December 10th, uh, 2020. And uh, today we are uh, dwelling upon uh, Christ and Calamity. This book right here, Christ and Calamity. Uh, and uh, what a great book it is as we continue on. Uh, with chapter four. Now, if you don't have a book, that's okay. Uh, please follow along as I will read many of the excerpts for you. As uh, today we will uh, focus in upon uh, the comfort of Christ and uh, what what that really is uh, compared to what we think comfort is all about. Okay, so <clears throat> as we continue this day, uh, why don't we begin? Uh, with a word of prayer. I want you to go back uh, to your uh, morning prayer here, and we'll continue. Let's begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. As we continue today, chapter 4. of Christ and calamity. All right. When you are afflicted, Christ is your comfort. When you are afflicted, Christ is your comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Why don't we read this together? 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 
For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we sp despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope that He will deliver us again. You also must help us by prayer, so that many give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Indeed, the God of all comfort, that's what we're going to uh, uh, really meditate upon today, uh, what this comfort is as we see St. Paul describing his suffering. I love that. Um, verse 9, Indeed, we felt that we have received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. And this is the picture of what that true comfort is as we strip away um, all that we, <coughs> well, all that we hold dear to us in a sense of our our habits, our comforts, and what uh, we we think comfort is. And today, as we read uh, through Christ and Calamity, uh, we will dwell upon that. Okay. All right. So, page thirty-three. <coughs> um, we'll start at the bottom there. Yet the question, what would Jesus do, also oversimplifies the biblical record about Jesus' actions. So I know when we talk about uh, WWJD, uh, what would Jesus do, um, yes, there is that we imply uh, many things about loving and serving one another just as Jesus did, right? Uh, but as we see right here, uh, we know that Jesus responded differently in in different situations. He cracked the whip at the money changers in the temple. Remember when he overturned the tables, right? Yet he rebuked Peter for his violence in Gethsemane. Uh, Jesus praised the woman who extravagantly, extravagantly poured ointment over her, over his head in Bethany, Matthew 26. Yet he also commended the poor widow for her paltry offering, um, Luke 21. Uh, Jesus saw into the human heart in a way that we cannot. So it's hard for us to figure out what we would do in every situation. But one WWJD always applies. What would Jesus do? He would suffer. When you suffer as a Christian, you can know for certain that you're doing what Jesus would. It's what Jesus actually did. He didn't seek suffering like some sort of cosmic masochist. Rather, he suffered because he wanted us. He came to seek and save the lost laying down his life as the ransom, <coughs> ransom to free all humankind from the bondage to sin, death, and hell. This suffering, as we see on 34 and 35, my friends, is his death upon the cross. That as we look at the death upon the cross, he would, uh, he would be lifted high upon this tree and, and eventually he would die of asphyxiation. Right? And this was an awful death for Jesus to die, page 35. Yet all the blood and the gore of the cross was only the tip of the iceberg. With his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, Jesus faced, faced God's wrath against us all. He was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And at the cross, the atoning sacrifice was made in his own body. Jesus carried the weight of all of humanity's sins. The penalty for our sin was born by him. The ransom price was paid in full. The scales of God's divine justice were balanced when Jesus died, and he said with a triumphal cry, it is finished. Does it sound strange that Jesus ended all that agonizing misery of body and soul on such a high note? His whole life and mission was to fulfill the Father's will. Jesus knew right from the start that he was on a mission to redeem a lost and condemned world, so he steadfastly set out to accomplish what had been sent, what he had been sent to do. He knew full well the price he would pay. All right, 
So this is, uh, as we look at Jesus and his suffering, we very well know he came to this world to do that very thing, to suffer by the crucifixion, right? See right there at the bottom there with Hebrews. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Having finished his race in triumph, Jesus achieved the goal of his entire life and ministry to pay the penalty for our sin and to ransom humanity from the clutches of sin, death, and hell. We too can find joy in suffering, provided, keyword, provided it is wrapped in the suffering of Jesus. All right? Key word right there. We can find joy in suffering provided it is wrapped in the suffering of Jesus. Key. Wrapped in the suffering of Jesus. All right, continuing. Whether you hurt either physically or emotionally, your suffering will find its meaning in Christ's suffering. Of course, your affliction doesn't pay for anyone's sins, much less your own. That's already over and done. For our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Your private pain finds meaning and collective experience of all Christ's beloved. Paul, in writing about the suffering he encountered in his ministry, as we read this morning in, in, in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, he saw affliction as the norm for all Christians. Right? He saw his personal problems as mysteriously linked with the whole church and the afflictions of Jesus. As he says in Col Colossians 1, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church. That's the secret to maintaining an even keel in storm-tossed situations. And to finding persistent hope in the midst of your suffering. Seeing your affliction as your personal link to Jesus. As we continue on here on the next page. <coughs> um top. Jesus is there with you because he bore your misery ahead of you and experienced it in human body just like yours. Your pain is sanctified in his. Emotional or physical distress can be endured not because you have sufficient grit and determination to push through it on your own, but because he is alongside of you. Don't you see right there? It's because of the suffering of Christ that we know what it means to live this life of suffering. That in this suffering, it's not about our own grit or determination, which, you know, I think for all of us, we, we could do what? We could, we could think that that is the way to endure this distress of emotional or physical, but rather it is the comfort of Christ that he is with us. That as we said earlier, we too, on page 37 at top, find joy in suffering, provided it is wrapped in the suffering of Jesus. You know, Dr. Sankbal, he, he talks about a lot of suffering that he met, that he has seen in his ministry, uh, but also in his bride as well. We know that, as he, we see in page, on page 39, uh, that life is never easy, right? Even for Christians. I think at times we try to play the role of everything is perfect and, 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 and we have no weaknesses or no suffering at all. But especially for Christians, there is... The reality of suffering. Page 39. I would like to stress in the middle this single point. You're not alone in your suffering. Jesus goes with you. You're not alone in your suffering. Jesus goes with you. In drawing close to him, you will find comfort in your affliction. Because Jesus walked the path ahead of you. Does that make sense? The, the triumph of the cross is the affliction, the, the sorrows that he bore on himself. Isaiah 53, 3. That every sorrow, every burden he took upon himself, right? And this is the path that he went ahead of you. But remember, comfort isn't necessarily comfortable. I love that. I, I think we, we always think uh, comfort is to... Uh, be in a better circumstance or be in a better state of, of comfort um, that is apart from suffering, right? We always think comfort and suffering are kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum. 
But here Dr. Sankbao writes, finding comfort doesn't always mean we are released from suffering. Instead, it means we are not alone in our personal misery or pain. We have company when we hurt. That's what a comforter is in the New Testament. Someone called alongside us to sustain us in calamity. <clears throat> As Christians, the best, the best we can give each other in times of affliction, well, is what we ourselves have received. Comfort from the Comforter-in-Chief, Christ Jesus our Lord. So I want you to remember that this day, my friends, about what it means to be comfortable in the midst of suffering. Right, That your comfort is not contingent upon the circumstance. That your comfort isn't, uh, uh, isn't because that suffering has gone away. No, your comfort is, is Christ. That even in the midst of suffering, that link is to the suffering of Christ and what he bore for us on that cross. That even in the midst of affliction, there we still have comfort because our comfort is not rooted in the temporal circumstances that we face. Trust me, the devil is there always. That tentatio, that spiritual attack, that temptation is always there. Physical affliction, mental affliction, all these things in life. Life is never easy. Right. You know, Jesus never promised that life would be perfectly easy, but he does give us that comfort. He does give us the eternal comfort of what he has given to us in his crucifixion, that Jesus came to this world to take upon the suffering, right, to, to, to bear our sin and be our savior. And I think it's a very comforting thing to know that Comfort isn't necessarily comfortable, right? That there is that spiritual struggle. That finding comfort doesn't always mean we are released from suffering. And it doesn't mean we have to bottle it up or, or, or hide it away or sweep it under the rug, right? That we all face suffering. And in that suffering... Where is our comfort? People will try to find, we all try to find comfort in so many different ways in the midst of suffering. We run away from it. Uh, we we, we uh, partake uh, in, in, in shopping or we, we watch a lot of TV or, or uh, we try to find something that will get us away uh, from the suffering that is before us. But here we see a reminder that even in the midst of all the suffering that we face, we ask, what would Jesus do? He dies on the cross. Now, we can't do that, of course. But there at the cross, we know that uh, he has outpoured to us his body and blood to comfort us in the midst of suffering. That's what Jesus does. He takes upon the wrath of the sin of the world to give you this comfort. Right? He stands in your place, faithful he is, all the way to the end, to be your comfort. That even in the midst of his suffering, he says, It is finished as he takes his last breath. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. This is your Lord. And when we speak of comfort, this is the objective comfort that you have in the midst of your sufferings by the one who bore your sorrow and your shame. And I think this is the constant for all of us. Trust me, there are days, even, even for myself, or man, I'm just like, wow, this is a lot of stuff that's going on. It's, it's a lot of stuff. It's almost so overwhelming as the walls are coming in, and you're just like, how do I deal with this? And our first reaction is to what? Try to fix it. Try to overcome it. Try to have that, as Dr. Sankbao would say, that, that, that grit, right? That grit, uh, that determination to push through this deluge of stress and calamity and affliction. But the important thing about today's comfort is this, is that we're not alone in our suffering. That even in the midst of this calamity that we may face internally, that we may not talk, <laughs> that we may hide and, 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 you know, try to avoid but there, in the midst of our suffering, we have Jesus who walked the path ahead of us all the way to Calvary. Right? 
comfort isn't necessarily comfortable. It's not about putting all the pieces together by yourself, hoping that, you know, if you do enough and you put all these pieces together, uh, life will be better. That's the quest of our human nature, isn't it? Of our sinful nature. Is to, is to fix it. Right? Is to find and, 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 and figure out that comfort for ourselves. When in fact, when we go back to the word, the word that is Christ, there we have our comfort. We, we stop searching. Because when Jesus says it is finished, the search is over. <laughs> Does that make sense? The search is over. The victory is yours. There is no need to look elsewhere because Christ is your Lord, the one who died on the cross, who suffered uh, the shame for you. And this is the sweet, sweet word of the gospel. And now we live in comfort. Does that mean we don't suffer? Of course not. There is affliction, there is suffering, but finding comfort doesn't always mean we are released from suffering. But in that suffering, in faith, we trust and cling to the work of the suffering Christ who died and rose for each and every one of us. Right? No longer is this about you or me trying to put it all together, but rather it's Jesus who invites you, Matthew 11, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right? This is the Lord's gift to you. That even in the midst of all that you're facing during this time of COVID, all the changes and all the delays, all the uncertainty, all the question marks, what if this, what if that, my life, wow, so many questions, so many overwhelming things that are, are really rocking the boat here. And so chaotic it may become that we might tell ourselves there's no comfort at all. But we see St. Paul here in 2 Corinthians as we look back. As the sufferings of Christ abound for us, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. You know, St. Paul, as he says right here, that he was in the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raised the dead. You know, in suffering, as St. Paul shows us here, it points us to Christ who was raised from the dead. It points us to our eternal comfort, knowing that through all things, our names are written in the book of life, and that we are children of God by his bloodshed, that we are forgiven of all of our sins, and that we have life in his name. That's comfort, right? And I, I, tell, I tell you this because I need to tell myself this all the time. Because my, my uh, nature as a human is to do what? To find that comfort elsewhere. Right? Maybe if I put these pieces together. Maybe if I do this right. Maybe if I just, you know, um, put this wire to that wire. And, and the blue and the red and the yellow and the green. And I just kind of put them all together. Life will be better. If I had a little bit more of this, or if I had a little bit more of that, or if this situation was better, or that situation was uh, a better, my life would be uh, more comfortable. But no, you'll soon find that the story is the same if we are searching through the eyes of man. Here we see the search is over. Christ is your comfort. The one who is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, not just the world, but your sin as well. My sin, your sin, this is our comfort this day. And what a great joy that is this day as we talk about when you are afflicted, Christ is your comfort. Pointed to Christ. Not just any, what would Jesus do? But what would Jesus do? <laughs> he dies for me and you. He rises for me and you. And he gives us life in his name, the greatest comfort that is Christ alone. May this be your blessing today as, as you go on with your day. And, and thank you for joining me whenever that may be. If you ever, ever have any questions or thoughts, you know where to reach me. I'm here for you. Love you all, praying for you all. And um, again, in suffering, Christ is your comfort. In suffering, say it with me, Christ is your comfort. Once again, in suffering, Christ is your comfort.
not just any comfort, but the comfort that God is with you, that he is, as it says right here, that Jesus has already laid this road, that he is ahead of you on this path, walking alongside of you, guiding you, comforting you in the promise of the gospel. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Sorry about the technical difficulties. And uh, I promise, <coughs> well, I don't promise, but hopefully next time it won't happen. All right, why don't we c conclude with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, O oh Lord. Uh, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we know that uh, through all things, through all affliction, through all suffering, you have given us the comfort of Christ. And bless us in this faith. And through your grace, even in the midst of the darkest valleys that we may be facing right now, Lord, may your eternal light continue to lead us in the comfort of your grace. Bless bless all those uh, who are uh, here with us and, and lead them always in your word. Uh, grant them comfort in the midst of affliction and through all things. Lord, grant them the, your joy in the gospel. But for all these things, we are thankful. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today. And uh, yes, hopefully this went well with you. Keep on, keep on going with this book and reread, continue to read. And uh, yes, what a great comfort it is today to read this text. I can't, I can't tell you how comfortable we are in the midst of all the comforts that we have in Christ Jesus. Continue, continue, continue running this race in the life of faith. All right. Until next time, love you all, praying for you all, adios, and goodbye.